Hey guys, this is Melissa Blizzard. I am a music teacher at Deering Elementary School. And I have uh, been asked to put together a little presentation to tell you guys about Donors Jews. Um, real quick before we get started, a little bit about me is um, I'm a, what's known as a DonorsChoose.org, a national teacher ambassador. I was actually one of the very first ones that they had. Um, so I've been doing this for a couple of years. And um, what that means is that I help teachers get started doing their very first Donors Choose project. So um, here I am helping you a little virtually right now instead of in person because of what's going on. And um, I'm here for whatever questions you need. So watch this little video. And at the end, if I can help you, my email is on the first slide. You can just come back here, check out my email, and give me a call. Um, I the, These numbers, unfortunately, are a little old. Um, I have had lots and lots of projects funded through Donors Choose. Um, I, I don't even know what my number is. I'm over $100,000 worth of stuff um, that I have gotten. So it's an awful lot of resources that have come into my classroom and I really love helping teachers get resources for their students. I truly believe that teachers should not have to pay out of their pockets to fund their classrooms. And I know that we just, you know, that they could give us as big a budget as they want, but it's never gonna be quite enough to provide all those extra special things you wanna give your kids. So I wanna tell you about Donors Choose, which can help you. Okay, so what is DonorsChoose.org? Um, consider it a combination of crowdfunding for teachers or online grant proposal writing. So it is a platform that was set up by a former teacher. His name is Charles Best, and he was working in the New York City public school system, which you may or may not know is terribly underfunded. And he was the thing that frustrated him as a teacher was that he was tired of being given things by the school district that he did not want or need when the things that he wanted and needed, he couldn't get his hands on. So he believed that teachers know best what is needed in their classrooms. So he thought to himself, my friends are always saying, could I help you buy some things for your class? And so he created the Donors Choose platform really as, as a way for people to donate to his classroom. It took off and he soon expanded it um, starting in New York City and adding states until now every teacher in an American public school who works 50% time or more can write a grant on the website and request the resources that they want. The great thing about Donors Choose for both our administrators and for the donors is that it is verified and accountable. When you put a grant proposal up on Donors Choose, they don't send you money. They send you the actual stuff that you want and this is great for you too because if if you need say 200 plastic easter eggs which believe it or not i just had a project funded for today they are going to send you 200 plastic easter eggs you're not going to have to buy them you're not going to have to be reimbursed they're going to send you what you need um, and it's going to come right to your school or now that they have a new distance learning feature it can come to your home this is also great for their donors because the donors know that if they wanted to send me 200 plastic eggs that's exactly what i'm going to get and they know that i'm not going to go buy, buy myself a new iphone with that okay um just a word of note when you get a donors choose grant the stuff that is donors choose sends you is owned by the school but the teacher is the steward of that grant so long as he or she is employed at that school. So if it comes to your school, it cannot be given to another teacher. It must be given to you. They can't say, oh, you know, the librarian really needs those iPads more than you. Nope, that's your stuff so long as you continue to work in that school. All right. The reason that the school has ownership, though, is because there would be a tax liability for you if you owned it. And instead, it goes to the school, which is a nonprofit organization. Okay. Um, some people ask me, is it really free to get things from Donors Choose? And I mean, nothing in life is free, y'all. I mean, we all know that. Um, but this is really darn close. Um, so what they do in when you get a project funded is Donors Choose is going to send you stuff. They're going to email your principal and they're going to email other teachers at your school who use Donors Choose to make sure you really work there. Um, the other thing that you're going to have to do in, as a thank you for the gift that you are getting, your students are getting, is you're going to have to complete a thank you package once you have received your materials. And this is really not terribly difficult. You have to write an impact letter on their site 
stating how amazing these items have made your classroom. You're going to have to upload six wonderful photos of your students using the materials. And sometimes if donors request them, you have to send five student written thank you notes to the donors. And you actually send those to donors choose using a prepaid mailing label that they will send you. And then they send them to the donors. And that kind of helps protect your anonymity and um, your students as well as them being able to be sure that the grant has been fulfilled correctly. Okay, moving on. Who can use Donors Choose? Um, this is a really great question. I get this one a lot. People who are working in public schools as teachers, counselors, and media specialists can automatically use it. Um, they also have some other people who can use it. People who work with students um, 75% of the time or more, okay? But who are in instructional roles? Um, and the, a lot of times I get the question, can administrators use it? And the answer to that is no, they cannot. Because the whole idea of Donors Choose was for teachers to choose what they needed for their classrooms and not administrators. And so, sorry boss, this is just for teachers. So that teachers can get what they want, not what administrators think they need. Okay, so you might be wondering to yourself, ooh, what can I get from Donors Choose? You can get anything that will be used by students or really by you to impact learning. You can get technology like Chromebooks or Kindle Fires. Um, we had a teacher at my school get a whole bunch of iPads. Um, lots of teachers have gotten Chromebooks and things like that for their classrooms. Also, if we are doing distance learning and you need a computer in order to teach them, you can get one. Remember, it belongs to the school, but if you need a Chromebook for your house so that you can create these video lessons and things that we have to do, that's possible. Um, you can get school and office supplies. Um, lots of teachers super into flexible seating before the, the corona kind of shut everything down. That's something that you can get. You can get furniture. You can get books. Books, y'all, so many books manipulatives, musical instruments. My room is evidence of that. Come on by, Darren, if you want to see that. Art supplies. You can get basic needs for your students. If you have students who are hungry, you can get snacks, blankets, backpacks. You can get a washing machine for your school so that you can wash children's clothes. It's incredible. Um, ordinarily, you can get money for field trips. There is a little pause on that right now because of the corona. And you can get money for professional development. And that is a little bit on pause right now too. They are currently only doing field, uh, field trips and professional developments that are virtual for a while. And I do believe that that goes through the entirety of this school year um, because of the COVID situation. What they don't wanna do is be refunding a bunch of people's money if, you, if your thing gets canceled. So, um, but ordinarily money for field trips, our entire kindergarten got to go to the aquarium and we paid for the buses using a donor's shoes, which was fantastic. Um, when you go on donor's shoes, they have partnered with certain vendors and you go on their site and you just go shopping. So if you want Scholastic books for your kids, you can go to the donor's shoes site and you can shop right with Scholastic. You can also go to their site and you can shop on Amazon. You can shop on Blick Art Supplies. You can shop at the Woodwind and Brasswind. Um, there are lots and lots of, of partner vendors who you can shop with to get the things that you need. What do you need to create an account? Um, it's really not hard and they've actually streamlined this process to make it much, much faster. Um, I don't even think you need a photograph to get started anymore. Um, you need a personal email address. Listen, don't use your school address. Um, many reasons for this, but mainly um, if you ever change schools, you keep your donors choose account. And also, you know, sometimes they'd like to change the format of our email address. Um, a couple years ago when I was in another county, we, we changed domains on our email address and at work and our old one disappeared. So if you have a personal email address, that's the best thing to use. Um, you also really are gonna want a nice selfie of yourself and a safe photo of your teaching, which means either your kids who you have photo releases for or the backs of their heads or student works or group photos. Um, you want something engaging. Donors really like those photographs and um, teachers who don't have photos of themselves and their, their teaching up on the website generally do not get many donations. So do take a nice professional photo of yourself um, and put it on up there. Okay, um, this is a little slide here and I'll attach this slide deck down um, in the YouTube link. You know, this is just, a, they have pixel requirements, a little hints on how to fix your pictures if you need to. Okay, 
Okay guys, so I want you to see what it's like to come in and create a project. I just typed in donorschoose.org and because I'm logged in here on my phone as myself, it took me right to my dashboard. If I hadn't been logged in, I could have gone to the menu and I could have gone to a login screen to get myself logged in. Um, it does take teachers directly to their teacher dashboard. You can see it's me because my name is at the top. I um, also like that up here at the top there are my project updates kind of lets me know where I'm at with all of my projects. You see that I have three projects that are going to require thank you notes. I'm going to need to get on those when we get back to school and choose replacements for uh, some items from one project that I had done. Okay, I'm scrolling down. Um, look at this new feature. It says not sure if your school will be open this fall. Create a distance learning project. They're really pushing people to make these distance learning projects because well, everything's up in the air. So please, please, please feel free to use distance learning. Even if you think we're going back, that's great. I just feel like nobody really knows what's going on right now. So you can make that distance learning project. And if we go back to school, nobody's going to call you on that. Okay, so just use the distance learning project and it's okay. If you were coming in to create a new project, you'd go scroll down to where it says create a new project and you would just click it. Okay, and then it asks you what type of project you would like to create. Now, I went in here and I made a draft project so that we could look a little more easily. So I'm just going to open that one up for you and I'm going to go to that opening screen again. So it asked me very first what type of project I'd like to create. Like I said, they're really pushing distance learning projects right now because they don't want things to be shipped to school and no one to be there to receive them. Um, one, they could get stolen, or two, it could be returned, and that creates a hassle for them. So they are encouraging people to go ahead and make these distance learning projects because distance learning projects can be shipped to the teacher's home, which is not the way they ordinarily do business, but they're doing it right now just because of the pandemic. You'll also see you could click standard projects, um, and it's warning me that if I do that, it's going to, to take off the things that I've put in there already, or professional development. So in normal times when we're not dealing with uh, COVID-19, this would be a great way to um, a great way to do some different kinds of projects. And um, then it says, who will be using the materials you will be requesting? Guys, it does not matter if the answer is you or your students. Um, if you need an iPad to make instructional videos with, by all means, ask for an iPad um, because these things do benefit your students even if you're using them. If you can teach them, it's a benefit to them. So just, you know, with integrity, if it's going to be for you, say you. If it's going to be for your students, say your students, okay? Um, and if you click you the teacher, oh darn, it just does not want me to do that. If you click you the teacher, it's going to um, say that properties belong to the, to the school, okay? So it doesn't really matter. Let's go okay here. Yeah. Okay, on your next about your students page, I happen to teach music in elementary school. I teach pre-K through five, which is why they are all clicked here. Um, if I was doing a project just for my fifth graders, which I did this summer, I got them some ukuleles. Um, I would have just gotten rid of all of this and just left fifth grade, um, but it really does not matter. Usually my projects do benefit all my kids. It does make you pick primary grades that will benefit from this project when you select multiple grades like I did. Um, put in the number of students. Again, it doesn't matter if that number is 470, which is the whole population of my school, or if the number is one. And as a matter of fact, projects that benefit one student, I've seen some very passionate projects that just benefit one kid um, that get funded just fine. So don't think you need to elevate your numbers. Just be honest. How many kids are going to benefit from this project? And it'll be just fine. Down here, this is the describe your student section. If you're doing distance learning project, which is what this one is for me, it's going to say describe your student's current distance learning circumstances. If you're doing a standard project, it will say describe your students. We always want to put our best foot forward when describing our students. Well, one, because I think donors want to read the positive, and two, because, you know, their parents might read this. So I like to use the sandwich method that we use when we call home. You know, you, you write something positive first, and then, and then maybe you put what their challenges are, and then you put something positive last. Um, and I truly do believe these things about my students, and I know that you do too. So, um, you know, you can say, you know, we've got some, some financing issues, but my students are going to do great things. Um, if I hadn't written enough, it would have told me down here at the bottom I needed to type more. And you'll see that when we get to the essay part, which I'm going to skip today. Okay. Then you get to go shopping, and if you want to use Amazon or NASCO, you have to be doing this from a desktop. I'm doing it from my phone so I can do the screen grab for you. But there are great vendors on here. Uh, AKJ, Best Buy, Blick, 
Britannica, Carolina Biological Supply, Dick's Sporting Goods. Hey, if you coach a sport after school, but through the school, you can get stuff for the baseball team. Or, hey, I help with the marching band. Sometimes stuff for the marching band. You can do all sorts of stuff here. Just got to be done through the school. All sorts of stuff. So I'm going to go to Lego Education right now just because I never get to shop for Legos. Kind of fun for a music teacher. And um, I'm going to go just find any product that I might want. And let's say that I really needed this early simple machine set and I could just add it to the cart. And that was all I needed. Maybe I wanted more things. You can shop multiple vendors, but maybe today this was all I needed. And so I'm going to put this here. I'm going to click checkout. Uh, if you're shopping through Donors Choose, it will not ask you for a credit card. If it does, you did something wrong. Let's try again. And this is the best part. It loads all the information for that early simple machine set that I wanted into Donors Choose. I don't have to put down item numbers. I don't have to provide links. It does it all for me. You might be wondering if you can shop from a vendor who's not on the Donors Choose site. The answer is yeah, mostly. Um, you have to have done a certain number of projects to build up enough teacher points to do what's called a special request. I do do a lot of things via special request because of the nature of what I teach. Your first project, though, cannot be a special request. You do need to shop from their vendor directory. Okay? You can also see a breakdown of costs here on this page. Um, there are vendor shipper, shipping costs from this vendor. There is sales tax. And I know you're going to say my school is tax exempt. I shouldn't have to pay sales tax. And I say to you, I'm really sorry. That's just the way it is. Um, in every Donors Choose project, there is a fulfillment, labor, and materials cost. Um, this is a $30 cost, whether your project total is $1,000 or your project total is $100, you will pay a $30 fee, which often makes it beneficial to put several things together in one project because you're gonna pay $30 regardless. This money goes to Donors Choose and it keeps their lights on. It pays their employees. It um, keeps the servers running that run this website um so this is a very very important 30 dollars if they did not fund and this is fundraised from your donors so you don't actually have to pay this yourself but if they didn't have this they could not run their charity um the thing at the bottom it says suggested donation to support donors choose this is always 15 percent of your project's value they ask your donors to donate an extra 15 percent to support the work that they do there. Um, again, you might be thinking that's a lot of money going back to donor shoes, and it is, but this suggested donation, this 15%, does things like um, if the cost of this early simple machine set goes up to $200 in the time when you post your project to when it's funded, which could be one, you know, could be tomorrow, it could be four months from now, they're gonna cover that just difference for you. Um, if they this completely goes out of stock and you need to order something else that maybe costs a little bit more, they're gonna cover that difference for you as well. And they do this for every teacher on their site. So this money kind of goes into a pot and it helps with things like that. So um, please try not to be too bitter about the fact that they ask you to help fundraise for them. It's because they do put all this money back into supporting teachers. They also use this money to negotiate corporate partnerships with people who give match offers. So this money goes a long, this little bit of money goes a long way toward helping us in the long run. Okay, um, in this next part, you have to summarize what's in your cart. Earlier I had paper in my cart, so I'll put that here. You might say, help me give my, my students this, you know, simple machines kit to use in our new Lego League or you know, whatever you're doing. Okay, you click save and continue. I was asking for paper earlier, so the title was Paper Paper Everywhere. Come up with something catchy there. I'm really terrible at titles, but you know, you want it to be something that's gonna catch the eye of your donors. And then in this section is where you're going to write basically your grant request. You're going to talk about what your kids need, why they need it, and why it's gonna make your classroom an enchanting place to learn. Um, in this, I really suggest that you don't use TeacherSeek. This is gonna help me meet their IEP goals and so that our CCRPI scores go up. Listen, half the time, some teachers don't know what those things are. And these citizen donors most certainly don't know what all these acronyms are. They do not want teachers speak. They don't, well, this is gonna improve the efficacy of the teaching in my classroom. Don't say that. Nobody wants to hear about that. They're gonna, you wanna say, this is gonna help my students learn to love science because they're gonna to get to learn about the cycles of the moon and the natural world they live in. You wanna use exciting speech here because these donors want kids to have amazing school experiences and you want them to know that that's what's going to happen for them so be passionate don't be clinical in this when you get down here 
you've got to pick two subject, you, excuse me, you have to pick one subject area and you may choose up to two. I'm a music teacher, so I usually click music. However, I always click something else as well. Um, so if we're going to learn how to, if we're gonna be using paper to write down our own music, I might click literacy because that's music literacy. If um, we're going to be um, studying you know, the science of sound, I might click applied science. So it just depends on what you're planning on teaching with this, but I always recommend that you pick two subject areas because donors can search by subject area and the more subject areas you pick, then the more diverse they are, the better chances your project has of showing up in their searches. And then it's telling me my project isn't quite ready because I didn't write that essay and that's okay. Um, it won't let me submit it until I do, but this kind of lets you know what that final sheet looks like. And if I were to come in and write that um, essay about what I'm going to do with the items I'm getting, it would let me submit it and it would let me send it in to donors choose. And so that's pretty much it. That's how you do it. Once you hit that submit button, it goes to a screener who makes sure you've done everything right. And then it is posted live on their site. Um, the amount of time that your project takes to get screened uh, depends on how many projects are in line to get screened. Um, they commit to having it done within five business days. Sometimes um, I've submitted a project and the screeners have had it posted in an hour. Sometimes it's been a week. So it really just depends on the time of year that it is, how busy the teacher screeners are, or how many projects have been submitted. So once that happens, your project will be called What's Going Live. It'll be live on the Donors Choose site, or they will send it back to you and ask you to make corrections. Usually though, it does go live right away and the fundraising can begin. Okay. When people donate to your project, you're going to want to thank each donor as they donate. And I'm about to, I have a project that was funded today. I haven't even, I was at band camp all day. I haven't had a chance to thank my donors. So real quick, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to thank a donor and I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay guys, so I want to show you how to properly thank your donors on Donors Juice. Um, this is my project. It was funded today. I mean, in just a couple of hours, I'm super grateful. Um, so I want to show you how to thank a donor. So I logged onto my page and it on my teacher page, it gives me lots of options of things I can do, but every unthanked donor that I have is going to be listed down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click thank this donor and I, Allison Elson is actually a friend of mine from Illinois and she gave me this money. I want to make sure that I thank her. So I'm going to type her a little, let's see what a lovely message she sent me here. Um, I'm going to send her a really thoughtful and fulfilled thank you message and make sure that she knows, even though she knows me personally, I want you to know how much I appreciate her. And if she doesn't know me personally, I want her to feel like she does when she's done. So I'm going to type her a little thank you and we'll see what I say. Okay. So I wrote to Allison. Allison, thank you so much for finishing my project for my students because she was my final donor. This year has been the craziest year and I know we are facing a lot of challenges as we go back. Whatever comes, I'm thankful for the support of people like you who will keep my kids learning. Thank you so, so much for your support. My students and I are so grateful. And, and that's it. You don't have to say a whole lot more than that. Um, but. Whatever I say to Allison, I'm not going to say to my other donors. I want Allison to come back and if she reads these, I want her to know that my response was special for her. So, um, you know, I can hit preview and then I will hit publish. And then when I go down to my next donor, so where'd she go? Here, I'm going to say something very different to Frauka. So I will say something very individual to my donor and that's how our donors know we appreciate them. Okay, so as you go through this, you need to thank each donor as they donate. So if I get a donation at eight o'clock in the morning on my lunch break, I'm gonna go on and thank that donor. Uh, the reason is because other donors, donors really just wanna thank you guys. And I mean, I think that goes for a lot of things in life. People just wanna be told thank you. So when someone donates, I want you to write them a, a sincere thank you note. And I want it to be individualized. I don't want you to go, thanks so much or thanks for supporting my kids. That's very generic. I want you to say, thank you, Allison, for supporting my kids today. You know how much music education means to children. And with these instrument kits, we are gonna be able to have amazing experiences this fall. It takes a village and I appreciate you. So you want to give something individualized to each donor because they that's all they want. They're giving you their money and all they want is a, a thank you. And whether or not they give you $100 or simply a dollar, you wanna give them 
that same kind of thank you. Uh, big money do donors will look at how you thanked your previous donors before they donate, okay? So make sure that you're giving them the kind of thank you that your big money donors are going to want. Okay, so getting this project funded, social media, you're gonna wanna post this. Listen, not everybody is on a teacher's salary. I have a friend who is an engineer and every single Christmas, she funds a donors choose project for me as a gift to her niece and nephew. Like that's part of their gift is she does, donates charitably in their name. And if I don't put up a project, she'll finish off projects for people at my school. One Christmas, I guess my project wasn't big enough for her. She finished off four projects at my school. So. Um, Put, share it on your social media. Email and text it. Send it via Remind to your students' parents if your school's policy allows for that. Ask your principal or whoever does your school's Facebook page to post it there. Um, use your lift off code. Your very first project, you'll get a promo code, kind of like a coupon code your donors can use, and it gets a match offer for the first seven days called lift off. So, you know, if your mama wants to give you $10, she puts in the code lift off and it becomes $20, and that is at no cost to her. Um, and then finally, there's lots of donors choose communities on Facebook. Um, look around on Facebook for different places. You can post your project and maybe get it some attention. So what do you do? Your project's success is your business. You need to work it. Don't set it and forget it. This is not a crock pot. You're gonna need to work, especially on your first project. Uh, tell your friends, your family, local businesses, bring it to the attention of, of giving pages with dollar donations if you need help on how to do that. It's kind of a whole nother subject itself. Shoot me an email, we'll talk about that. Um, and just because the, the materials and the money is free, it doesn't mean you don't do anything. And really, dollar donations matter. Um, if you can say to on Facebook, hey, if you can spare a dollar, it would make a big difference. Because again, donors like to see that other donors are interested in your project. People like to be part of a winning team. People like to be, do things that other people are interested in. That's just human nature. So work on your project. Um, matching grants gosh y'all it has been years since i've written a project without a matching grant and again this slide deck is going to be linked in the description below this video so i want you to take a look at this very very often corporations or charitable foundations will do matches on donors choose and that means that for every dollar that someone donates to your project they will donate another dollar sometimes they're even bigger than that sometimes they'll donate two dollars for every dollar but a one-to-one -one match is the most common um, so this morning the match that was on my project that i had is was a match from google and google wanted to um, match on projects that spread diversity in their classrooms so when I wrote my project, I talked about how we do a lot of multicultural music in my classroom, which is true. And my project qualified for the match, so for every dollar someone donated to me, Google also donated a dollar. I happen to know right now that uh, Airborne is doing a match to uh, for any distance learning project that promotes keeping kids healthy. So every single match has its own criteria and you need to read the match offer to understand how to qualify for it. If you need help with match offers, please, please, please just contact me, I will help you. Um, and again, donors like to donate to projects that have matches because for them, it's like, I don't know, it's like taking someone else's money and giving it to a school. They love that sort of thing. So um, please, please contact me when you're writing your grant. I will help you try to find a match that will fit your project. Um, read those fully and carefully. Make sure they match uh, what you're doing because if you do not qualify for the match offer, they won't, they will just not gonna give it to your project, okay? Let's see. Um, okay, this is a personal tip. Always have a project posted in case of flash funding. So there was a day a couple of years ago where um, someone came along, at the Ripple, Corp Ripple Corporation, they are an internet currency corporation and they funded every single project on Donors Choose. Literally every teacher in the country got funded. Um, Craig Newmark, who is a huge supporter of military communities, will come along periodically and fund every project in a uh, high military area school. So you never, sometimes they do regions, sometimes they do states. Stephen Colbert funded the whole state of South Carolina one day. So uh, you never know when flash funding is going to happen. And so, my thing is always have a project posted. Um, it could just sit there. You don't necessarily have to be working it, but um, 
you never know when someone's going to come along. Um, you know, a teacher at my school had a project posted, which honestly I thought it was thought it was too much money, and I told her so. Um, for iPads, and I thought I said, oh, you know, that's an awful lot of money for a project. She said, well, I'll just let it sit there. And sure enough, Oshkosh Bagosh wanted to fund pre-K projects. They came and funded every pre-K project on the site in the states where they have a presence. And she got it was an awful lot of money worth of iPads. And she just happened to have her project up when someone was looking to fund her project. So have a project posted at all times. You never know. Um, there's some great days for flash funding. Giving Tuesday, right after Thanksgiving. Uh, best school day, the beginning of the school year, December, and months that correspond with your subject or project areas. So Black History Month or Music in Our Schools Month, which is in March. If you have projects that fit those criteria and someone comes along, they might just come along and flash fund them. Keep an eye on your email. Once you register with Donors Choose, they will send out uh, opportunities to earn gift cards. Um, and they come up in all sorts of different ways. And if you, there are some websites that I'll tell you about in a little bit where you can find out about these opportunities. I just got a $50 gift card for participating in a survey on Donors Choose, and I put it toward my project, and that project had a match. So I turned that $50 gift card into $100 free dollars for my classroom. So keep an eye on your email. They also had some amazing grants recently called the, the KKL, Keep Kids Learning Grants. And you could just apply for it, and they a teacher in my school got it. She got $1,000 to get things to buy and put in little kits for her students. So she got all sorts of books and kits, and she was able to deliver them to her students during the Learn From Home time. So you never know when free money might just fall from the sky. So keep an eye on your email. And of course, you're watching for that best email ever when your project gets funded. So this is how you use Donors Choose. I'm gonna show you um, in a second, how you can get you, how you can confirm your project when it is done. To show you now how to confirm a project that was funded. I got a project funded today. I am super excited about it, and yeah, I get a lot of junk mail. It's it's really bad. So let's see if I can find this email here, and I'm going to show you what happens when your project gets confunded. First of all, you get this email, which is known affectionately as the rocket ship email so if you get a project funded people are gonna say oh you got your rocket so here's what I'm gonna I'm gonna hit confirm now and it's gonna take me to the donors to site if I wasn't logged in I would just have to log in and it's gonna say will you carry out your project as described in your essay and I mean I guess this is in case I don't know you quit teaching um, so I'm just gonna say yes I absolutely am going to carry out my project it's telling me what I asked for. And in this particular project, I had asked for resources to make individual music kits for the year. So this is kind of random stuff that I'm gonna make, kind of homemade instruments out so every kid has their own. So I'm gonna say, yes, I still need these. If for some reason, at this point, you realize you made a mistake, like say you ordered um, cases for an iPad and you accidentally ordered cases for iPad minis instead of cases for iPad, stop what you're doing and um, Stop what you're doing and contact donors choose using the contact button. Don't say no, I don't need these or it'll cancel your project. So I'm gonna say yes, I still need these. Um, and then I'm going to, it can set ship because this was a distance learning project. It can deliver to a new address or it can deliver to my school. I'm gonna ask these and if you look here, it knows where my school is. I'm going to tell it that I want it to come to my house because this is a distance learning project and I'm gonna be working on these at home so I'm gonna pause just a second and cut out my street address love you but you don't need that I'll be right back with you okay so now I'm gonna confirm my shipping information because I put my address in here okay it's telling me that my thank you package is going to be due on November 13th and it's telling me right now what's required in my thank you package usually a thank you package includes the six products of your photo that's pictures of your kids using the resources an impact letter where you tell your donors how amazing it has made your classroom and ordinarily you have to send five thank you cards to each donor who donated to your project um, it looks like here that my donors just did not request them so sometimes the donors say don't send me thank you cards and apparently that's what all of my donors did 
So I don't have to do that for this time. Um, look down here where it says change due date. If I knew, for example, that we were going to be virtual learning this fall and there was no way I could get this package in on time, it's not a big deal. I could just extend it. If I have any problems in the future getting my package in on time, I can just contact them and get that package extended. It's really not a big deal. Okay, so I'm just gonna say I'll submit this on time. And then I'm gonna write a, good, a note to my donors um, telling them how thankful that I am. So I'm gonna pause this video in just a second and I'll let you see what I wrote to them. Okay, so this is what I'm saying to my donors. Um, and remember here, we always wanna use passionate writing, not clinical writing, because these are just citizens who have given you their money. They're not educators. They don't get educator acronyms. So, and, and I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled about this project being funded. It's such a huge relief for me. Um, and I want to express that to them. So, you know, I said, dear donors, words can't express how enormously grateful I feel toward all of you right now. I think every teacher in the country has concerns about returning to school this fall and how we will keep our beloved students safe. You have just taking a huge worry off my mind. Thank you so much for giving my kids this opportunity to continue studying the music of our world through these individual instrument kits. It truly takes a village and we are so grateful that you are part of ours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I will click submit note and it's going to ask me again just to verify that I'm still teaching in a U.S. public school and they send it to my school address and I'm going to open up my school Gmail and I'm going to confirm it from there. And here we go. It's gonna tell me how much of the money that was raised came from their partners. Google was a huge help in this project. How many community members gave, all that kinds of stuff. They want you to see those numbers. It lets me know where the support for my project came from. The thing I think that I really want you to know most of all is that I am here for you. I couldn't possibly tell you everything I know about Donors Choose in a video. It would get way too long, but if you want to use the platform, I encourage you to do so. And I really encourage you to contact me because I can help you. The other thing I want you to know before I show you how to confirm a project is that Donors Choose offers me a $25 gift card if you use my referral link, which I'll put in the description of this video. Um, because I'm an ambassador, I don't keep that money for myself. If you use my referral link when you log into Donors Choose and create your project, when they send me that gift card, I will donate it back to your project. As long as you send me an email and say, hey, Melissa, I used your referral link because I need to know who you are. So if you do that, I will donate it back to you. And that's $25 in free money, which is a pretty good deal. Okay guys, so this is the end of my little tutorial video. I wish you much luck on your Donors Choose video. And when you're ready to post your first project, please just email me, I'll send you my number, we can text, we can chat. I am here to help you. I hope that you all have a very successful school year and please don't hesitate to let me know how I can help you. All right guys, see you later.